Greenacres is an American sitcom starring Eddie Albert and Eva Gabor as a couple who move from New York City to a rural country farm. Produced by Filmways as a sister show to Petticoat Junction, the series was first broadcast on CBS, from September 15, 1965 to April 27, 1971. Receiving solid ratings during its six-year run, Greenacres was cancelled in 1971 as part of the Rural Purge by CBS. The sitcom has been in syndication and is available in DVD and VHS releases and is archived on YouTube. In 1997, the two-part episode A Star Named Arnold is Born was ranked number 59 on TV Guide's 100 Greatest Episodes of All Time. Background Following the success of the Beverly Hillbillies and Petticoat Junction, CBS offered producer Paul Henning another half hour on the schedule a Euro with no pilot required. Henning encouraged colleague Jay Summers to create a series for the time slot. Summers created the show based on his 1950 radio series, Granby's Green Acres. The radio series, which lasted 13 episodes, had starred Gail Gordon and B. Benadaret as a big city family who moved to the country. In pre-production, proposed titles were Country Cousins and The Eddie Albert Show. Premise, Green Acres is about Oliver Wendell Douglas, an erudite New York City attorney, acting on his dream to be a farmer, and Lisa Douglas, his glamorous Hungarian wife, dragged unwillingly from an upscale New York condo and the city life she adores to a ramshackle farm. The theme tune, as with those of the show's rural cousins, explains the basic premise of the show. At the end of the opening sequence, Albert and Gabor strike a pose in parody of Grant Wood's painting American Gothic. The debut episode was a mockumentary about the decision to move to a rural area, anchored by former ABC newscaster John Charles Daly. A few weeks after the show's debut, Albert and Gabor returned the favor by appearing on What's My Line as that episode's mystery guests and publicly thank Daly for helping to launch their series. After the first episodes the series developed an absurdist world. Though there were still many episodes that were standard 1960s sitcom fare, the show became notable for its surrealism and satire. The show appealed to children through its slapstick, silliness, and shtick, but adults were able to appreciate it on a different level. Supporting Characters the show is set in the same universe as Henning's other rural television comedy, Petticoat Junction, featuring such picturesque towns as Oterville, Pixley, Crable Corners, and Stankwell Falls. As such, at times it shares some of the popular characters from Petticoat Junction, including Joe Carson, Fred and Doris Ziffel, Newt Kiley, and Floyd Smoot. Much of the humor derives from the quixotic, yet short-fused Oliver, who strives to make sense of his oddball surroundings. There seems to be a dual perspective of reality, Oliver versus everyone else. The latter encompasses the Who to villains, Oliver's high-maintenance wife Lisa, and his affluent mother, who lampoons him for his agricultural pipe dreams. Such dual realism is at its best when everyone but Oliver can see the TV screen credits, when he corrects Lisa's mangled mispronunciations only to find that he is the only one in town with the correct usage, when all but Oliver can translate Arnold the pig's grunts and snorts into English, etc. Among Oliver's ongoing irritants are his makeshift, low-output electric power system, his outdoor telephone which was installed atop a pole, and the Monroe brothers' countless botched remodeling projects which are rarely completed. Conversely, Oliver himself is subject to ribbing by the town folk when he performs farming chores dressed in a three-piece suit, and when he launches into wide-eyed monologues about the American farmer replete with a five-plane Yankee doodle in the background. The dishonest, oily salesman Mr. Haney, who sold Oliver the Green Acres farm continues to con his easy mark in most episodes. Oliver's naivete allows Haney to shamelessly exploit him financially. Haney, along with Young, Glib farmhand Eb Dawson, scatterbrained county agent Hank Kimball, and general store owner Sam Drucker make up the main supporting cast. Eb habitually addresses the Douglases as dad and mum, much to Oliver's objection. Recurring characters included the Douglases' childless elderly neighbors, Fred and Doris Ziffel, who adopted a pig named Arnold as their son. Arnold understands English, lives indoors, and is pampered. 
he is an avid TV watcher and a Western fan, who attends the local grade school. Only Oliver seems cognizant that Arnold is just livestock, although he frequently slips and begins treating him as a boy. Arnold makes regular appearances throughout the series, often visiting the Douglas home to watch their TV. Another pair of recurring characters are two quarrelsome carpenters called the Monroe brothers, Alf and his brother Ralph. In the episode that introduced them, Alf confessed that Ralph was actually his sister, and explained they would not get jobs if people knew that she was a woman. The Monroes rarely finish projects, and those they do complete are disasters. In one episode, after accidentally sawing Sam Drucker's telephone line at the general store, they splice it back together, although backwards, causing Drucker to listen at the mouthpiece and talk into the receiver. Melton left in 1970 to do Make Room for Granddaddy, so the writers developed an occasional subplot that involved Sister Ralph's attempts to win the affections of Hanky Kimball or some other hapless old terrible bachelor. Alf later returned for Ralph's failed wedding to Kimball. It was never revealed if Ralph and Kimball married again although strictly speaking two persons making public wedding vows would have constituted a common law marriage. Sam Drucker was a regular on both Petticoat Junction and Green Acres. The first bar of the Petticoat Junction theme song is usually played during the establishing shot of his store, which also appears on Petticoat Junction indicating the Petticoat Junction's Shady Rest Hotel is very close to Oroterville. While Drucker is a provincial everyman in Petticoat Junction, his character is bent a bit here and backward as well, his telephone dates from the 1920s. Drucker also serves as a newspaper editor and printer, volunteer fireman, constable, justice of the peace, and postmaster. As editor of the Oroterville World Guardian, his headlines are often decades old. He is slow as postmaster, having belatedly delivered a lost 1917 draft notice to Fred Ziffel after 51 years, which surpassed the 26-year delivery record of a lost 1942 WPA letter to Haney for stealing a shovel. As Justice of the Peace, Drucker once lets his license lapse, unwittingly sending Ralph Monroe and Kimball to their premature honeymoon. Drucker is often the only character inspired by Oliver's rural patriotism, filtering Oliver's idealism to the townsfolk and the plebeian, backwards notions of the community back to Douglas. In one episode, the menfolk believed they could get a tax refund without ever having paid taxes. To Oliver's surprise, they did but when the Internal Revenue Service threatened to send everyone to jail, the IRS settled for becoming business partners with the farmers in one of Mr. Haney's many outlandish schemes to recoup their money. In a slap to government bureaucrats and civil service employees, Alvy Moore plays spacey agricultural agent Kimball, who draws folks into inane conversations, digresses and loses his train of thought, and then exits the scene. The series was reportedly one of the first to use cue cards extensively during filming, and Moore later recounted that he found this invaluable when performing Kimball's rambling, rapid-fire dialogue. Lisa's skewed worldview and domestic ignorance provides fertile ground for recurring gags. Much of her early life was lived in Hungary where she grew up as a diva of her time which explains her lack of education and her ignorance of normal household chores and everyday living. She and Oliver are both veterans of WWYI. Her waterless coffee oozes from the pot in a thick, tar-like sludge. Her hotcakes are inedible, so tough that Oliver makes her gaskets for his truck and tractor using the recipe. In one episode, hotcake batter is used as fireplace mortar. In another, hotcakes are used to re-shingle a roof. Her sandwiches include such epicurean delights as liverwurst and jelly. Instead of washing dishes, Lisa sometimes tosses them out the kitchen window. In one episode, Oliver finds Lisa mending holes in his socks with a stapler. As he begins to comment on it, a visiting Fred Ziffel says, I see you're mending socks. Don if you don't do it better than Doris does. In the episode Alf and Ralph break up, Lisa admits that she has no cooking abilities and says her only talent is her Zizigabor imitation. Though Oliver and Lisa are both depicted as fish out of water, the concept provides an ironic twist. While Oliver instigated the move from Manhattan to Oroterville over Lisa's objections, it is Lisa who more naturally fits into the illogic of their neighbors while quickly assimilating to their quirky, offbeat surroundings. Oliver, 
while eager to fit in, is often at a loss to grasp the surreal hoot of billions. Many of the shady rest hotel folks from Pettigoat Junction appear, including three of the four Bradleys, and Joe Carson. Uncle Joe is sometimes playing checkers, loafing, or mooching fruit at the general store with Newt Kiley or Floyd Smoot. Betty Jo Bradley appears in one episode as Ep Dawson's date. Bobby Joe appears in the same episode. Kate Bradley appeared in a few of the early episodes trying to help Lisa adapt to country living, most notably giving her the recipe for her infamous hot skicks. Western film actor Smiley Burnett guested several times as railway engineer Charlie Pratt during the 1965 and 1966 seasons, but Burnett's ill health ended the role. Burnett and Pat Buttram were both comic sidekicks of singing cowboy Gene Autry in his 50s westerns. Ruth Davis was seen as train conductor Floyd. Rural Purge Cancellation During its sixth season during the 1970 Euro 71 television season, Greenacres placed 34th out of 96 shows. Despite the respectable ratings and winning its time slot, the series was cancelled in the spring of 1971 after six seasons and 170 episodes. At the time CBS was under pressure from sponsors to have more urban-themed shows on their schedules. To make room for the newer shows, nearly all of the rural-themed shows were cancelled. This part of television has become known as the Rural Purge. Pat Buttram stated of the purge, CBS cancelled everything with a tree a euro including Lassie. Reunion film, in the 1990 reunion TV movie Return to Green Acres, a twenty-something Arnold survived his parents, and subsequently bunks with his cousin, the Ziffel's comely niece. The film was made and set two decades after the series. The Monroe brothers still have not finished the Douglas's bedroom. In the movie, Oliver and Lisa have moved back to New York, but are miserable there. They are implored by the Hootavillians to return and save the town from a scheme to destroy it, cooked up between Mr. Haney and a wealthy, underhanded developer. With a nod to the Times, Haney's latest product is a Russian miracle fertilizer called Gorby Grow. Cast, Oliver Wendell Douglas, Eddie Albert, Lisa Douglas, Eva Gabor, Eb Dawson, Tom Lester, Sam Drucker, Frank A.D. Mr. Eustace Haney, Pat Buttram, Hank Kimball, Alvy Moore Frederick Ziffel, Hank Patterson, Doris Ziffel, Barbara Pepper Fran Ryan, Arnold Ziffel, Alf Monroe, Sid Melton, Ralph Monroe, Mary Grace Canfield, Newt Kiley, K.E. Kitter, Mother Eunice Douglas, Eleanor Audley, Roy Trendle, Robert Folk, Ben Miller, Tom Fadden, Horace Colby, Hal Smith, in addition, there were crossovers from Petticoat Junction cast members, most frequently, Uncle Joe Carson, Edgar Buchanan, Floyd Smoot, Ruth Davis, Charlie Pratt, Smiley Burnett, Kate Bradley, B. Bernardet, of the above cast, Tom Lester is the only surviving member as of April 2014. Guest stars, during its six-season run, many familiar actors guest starred on the show, along with other lesser-known performers who later achieved stardom, among them, John Charles Daly, Elaine Joyce, Gary Dubin, Herbert Anderson, June Foray, Robert Cummings, Sam Edwards, Jerry Van Dyke, Jay Patter Malley, Johnny Whitaker, Jesse White, Al Lewis, Gordon Jump, Bernie Coppell, Len Lesser, Bob Hastings, Don Kiefer, Don Porter, Alan Hale Jr., Melody Patterson, Rusty Hummer, Regis Toomey, Heather North, Alan Melvin, Parley Bear, Jack Bannon, Rick Lenz, Karen Valentine plus many others. Future Happy Day stars Al Molinero and Pat Morita to guest starred on separate episodes, while young comedian Rich Little made a cameo appearance as himself. Episodes Revivals The surviving members of the cast were reunited for a TV movie titled Return to Green Acres. It aired on CBS on May 18, 1990. Except for Eleanor Audley, who had retired from acting 20 years earlier. Eddie Albert and Eva Gabor recreated their Green Acres characters for the 1993 CBS special The Legend of the Beverly Hillbillies. On November 19, 2007, original series director Richard L. Baer announced that he is working on a revival of Green Acres. 
Variety announced on July 22, 2012 that a Broadway-aimed musical was in development, with an initial draft of the book written by Richard L. Baer. There is no composer, lyricist or director attached. DVD releases MGM Home Entertainment released the first three seasons of Green Acres on Region 1 DVD. No release of the remaining three seasons is announced. Granby's Green Acres the Granby's Green Acres radio show aired from July 3 to August 21, 1950. The show was produced, directed and written by Jay Summers, who wrote and produced a third of the Green Acres episodes. In both, a businessman knowing little about farming moves to an impoverished farm. The characters are more conventionally odd, the wife stereotypically talkative and dim. The Sam Drucker character is the absent-minded and befuddled feed store owner Mr. Kimball while hired hand Ebb is elderly and stoic about incompetent management. Nielsen Ratings, Film and Broadway Adaptation, Bear is working on a film version of the TV series, and he's teaming up with Philip Goldfein and his Hollywood Media Bridge to produce the film and a Broadway version is also in development. See also, Guestwood, Ho! Slot Machine, a popular slot machine, based on the Green Acres television show, was introduced in 2006. The gambling game features two progressive jackpots that are won if enough haystacks are shown among the 25 individual reels. The bonus rounds include the hotcake bonus, and Arnold's wild bonus. References, general references, Cox, Stephen. The Olive Terrible Handbook Our Viewer's Guide to Green Acres. St. Martin's Griffin. ISBN A0-312-08811-6A. Specific citations. External links. Green Acres at the Internet Movie Database. Green Acres at TV.com. Green Acres on TV. LAND.com. Green Acres on Ion Television. Green Acres episodes on Hulu.